So you currently live outside of the country. Maybe you're in Europe or China or the Middle East or Canada. To tell you the truth, I've had clients from all of these places and many more places than this as Cambridge is an extremely international town. And you are looking to make an investment in the area. Maybe you're looking to buy in Cambridge or Somerville. Maybe it's for yourself or a child and you don't know where to begin. In today's video, I am going to help those looking to relocate to the area or buy for friends or family in the Cambridge Somerville area. Make sure they're doing the right things to protect themselves throughout the process. If you guys don't know me, my name is Sage Jankwitz. I'm a real estate agent based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I've worked with investors and landlords and buyers and sellers in Cambridge, Somerville and Medford, Massachusetts. I've closed over 400 transactions in the last five years. Before I get into the video, please take a second to hit that subscribe and like button. If you have questions as I'm going through this video, take a second and definitely hit me up. There's a calendar link in the description below, or you can reach out to me directly with any questions. All right, let's get into it. So you're thinking of buying, you're an international client, where do you begin? Well, I think the first place to begin is a question I get all the time from international buyers and investors, which is, can I actually do this? Can I buy? I'm a Chinese national, I'm a French national, I'm a Canadian national. Is it possible to buy real estate in Cambridge or Somerville or Medford? The answer to that question is a resounding yes, you absolutely can. There are no rules in the United States or locally here in Massachusetts, which prohibits you from buying with you being an international buyer. So 100% the answer is yes. The next question I typically get asked is how do I finance this? And that's a great question. So a couple thoughts here. The first is you really want to make sure that you're connecting with a loan officer who specializes or at least provides a product that is geared towards international buyers. Not all banks will lend to international buyers. I am happy to hook you up with a few people that I think do a great job around this. There are certain banks in the area locally who have a good reputation working with international buyers. Another route that you may consider if you have family in the area that are US citizens, you may consider working with them and having the purchase go under their name. And there's a certain way that you have to go about that. There may be some funds that need to be seasoned. In other words, funds being passed over to that family member. But sometimes when you work with a family member who is a citizen, if you have that option, you can end up saving, you know, one, two, maybe even more than two points on your loan, which can be very significant. So if you're not a cash buyer, this is something worth exploring. And again, if you have questions about this in more detail, you know, hit me up and I can talk about it in more detail offline. The next thing that you really need to think about if you're an international buyer is how is this all going to work? And the mistake I've seen a lot of international buyers make is they haven't really thought through how they're going to get to a level of comfort where they can really buy a property if they're not here locally. And so what tends to happen is, you know, you have an international buyer client and they say, oh, I'm going to buy, but I'm actually going to be, you know, out of the country the whole time. We'll just do video tours and I'll be comfortable enough. And while I have worked with buyers, believe it or not, and purchase properties, investment properties, totally remotely. Most of the time at the price point we're talking about, which is typically 1.2 million and up, you generally want to see the product you're buying. Again, not always, there's been exceptions, but usually you want to be on the ground. And the next challenge there is if you live in Europe, if you live in China, if you live in Australia, it's a long schlep out here. And if I find a property, the timeline is pretty quick. Usually properties will come on on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of any given week. There are open houses on the weekend and the property is typically gone by the following Monday or Tuesday. So you have a very small window to fly out here, potentially a very long flight, look at the property and then you have to win the offer and the reality is particularly in Cambridge and Somerville but Medford more and more are extremely competitive markets so you might fly out here you might look at the property it might be the perfect fit the numbers work but then you have to win the property and that isn't so easy to do so you can run into the situation where you're constantly going back and forth and back and forth and it can just be a nightmare so I think the first thing you really need to figure out is how is this all going to work are you truly comfortable making a decision virtually again I have had clients where they are comfortable do you need to meet me I've had clients that believe it or not 
have never met me until they bought the property and came here. Most people though are not in that boat. Most people need to be here. You know, can you stay here for potentially a couple weeks or a couple months? I would say in the most ideal world, you could be here for a few months, really look at a lot of things with me, get familiar and then make a decision. But you need to figure out what works for you. You know, I use WhatsApp every single day of my life. I do a lot of WhatsApp video tours, but is that going to be enough where you can truly be comfortable making the decision? The last thing you want to do is put a lot of time and energy into this and then realize you're just not in a place where you're prepared to go that route. So really think it through, come up with a plan before you really get in the weeds because it does take a lot of time and commitment to buy a property. The next thing that you need to figure out is what is your investment strategy going into this? So for example, I have a lot of international clients, especially in Cambridge, where they're buying specifically either for themselves, they might be a professor who's coming to work at Harvard or MIT, or they might be buying for a child, perhaps uh, someone for undergrad, graduate school or PhD program, and they're buying a condo or a multifamily property for their child. Well, with that strategy, the way that you're thinking about buying is gonna be very, very very different and then if you're a pure investor that's planning for sure to hold a property for 10 15 20 plus years the areas that you're going to focus on are going to change the returns that you're going to need to see are going to change if you're in a tighter timeline you need to be more conservative with which generally will mean being in better areas and paying a premium up front if you're going to buy for the long haul 10 15 plus years you may be focusing more on areas that are gentrifying that aren't quite all the way there yet but have more longer term upside so you really need to think through your investment strategy this is a part of any initial call that i have with my clients it's the, one of the first things we get into in a lot of detail understanding your particular needs so you need to flesh out your investment strategy a bit if you want to go over some different ideas again hit me up in the calendar link below i'm happy to talk it through the next thing that you need to think through is management and this is something that I find surprisingly for me actually a lot of my international clients haven't necessarily thought through which is okay you're gonna buy this property it's an investment you're overseas or maybe you're here for a little bit and then you're going to leave you're gonna be very far away potentially who is managing this property are you going to manage this property and you live in Kuwait well you know, I have clients in Kuwait and they find ways to make these things work, but you need to think this through. You really, really do. You either need to have someone local that you can trust, perhaps a friend or a family member locally who can continue to sort of manage the property. You need to hire a professional management company, which can be quite expensive. It's typically five to 10% of your monthly rents, or, you know, you can try and do it yourself from afar with some help. So you need to understand what is your game plan here? I have some strategies that work for a lot of my clients. Again, you can reach out to me and we can talk through this, but you need to have this plan in place beforehand. What you don't want to do is buy the property, a couple years go by, you go back to wherever you were beforehand, you're far away, you know, in a different time zone, and the hot water system breaks or the heating breaks. And now it's up to you to fix and you don't know what to do. So have a plan in place. It will make a world of difference when you get into the buying process. The final thing that you really need to think through is what are the tax implications? Now, I'm not a tax expert. I know a good amount when it comes to real estate taxes, particularly in Massachusetts and on the federal level and how they kind of interplay here. But an international client, there might be certain repercussions for your tax status where the country which you're from. And so you could be in a situation where you're paying double taxes or things like that. And so it's critically important that you do your tax homework before you get into any of this, that you consult with a CPA. And what I recommend is you talk to a CPA, both here in the States and also wherever you're coming from and make sure that on both ends, you understand what's going on here, what the tax implications are and make sure that you're in a good spot. You don't wanna be in a situation where say you're getting double tax on a sale and your plan is to sell the thing in a couple years because all of a sudden the numbers may not work. So make sure you do your tax homework as well. So those are some kind of key high level issues that I've just seen over time that clients deal with. Make sure you're not caught with your pants down and you're prepared for all these issues. You've thought them through. I am happy to hop on a free consultation and talk through any of these issues as well as a lot of other things that I see come up. But I hope you found this video helpful. Please take a second to subscribe and like, comment if you have any questions below and I'll see you guys next time.